Today I've created this look, it's called the Halo Eye and it's using the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dreams eyeshadow palette. So I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, here we go. So before I begin, I'm just going to put my hair into my headband. It's a bit wet. So we're just going to pop that up and get it out of the way. And I'm going to start with some moisturizer. Moisturizer today is the Youngblood. This is the Hydrolux water cream, one of my absolute faves. And I love this little container. It's a new one, so yeah. Just enough comes out each time. And I'm just going to massage that into my skin. Now I'm sounding a little bit kind of fluey. I've had the flu all week, which is why I haven't done any makeups. But today I thought it's about time. <laughs> So anyway, massaging that in, oh, that's so nice. And just always make sure I get my neck and decolletage my ears. I like to put the residual just over the backs of my hands as well. Eye cream today is also a Youngblood product. Again, it would have to be one of my favorites. It's, um, it's just really nice and soothing under the eyes. And I find, well, that's way too much. Um, I was going to say a little bit goes a long way. If you do that, just ensure to use it and just massage that in. Just really helps to wake up that eye area. Um, I always put my residual on the lips for some reason. Just don't want to waste it. Same on this side. I have gone a little bit too much. So anyway, I feel... Today, I do need that little bit extra, bit of extra wake up around the eyes. And just massage that in. Really important to give it a good massage. Now I'm going to head in with my sunscreen. This one is by Airy Day. This has to be my all time favorite. It's an SPF 50, uh, but it's the mineral mousse. So it goes on, um, very much unlike sunscreen, which is probably why I love it. Now, I've been told many times before I don't wear enough sunscreen when I do my videos. I think it's because I'm trying to rush and so I don't overdo it because I know I'm likely to do this makeup and then quite possibly wash it all off. So here goes, I'll try and make sure I add a little bit more. But to be honest with you, until I found this product, really didn't like sunscreen and I know that's bad but I just never found one that I loved and then half of them you know contained all sorts of bad ingredients anyway so felt a little bit counterproductive but this one is beautiful and as you can see it hasn't left like I'm not all sticky and shiny and that'll just settle in and I'll use that a little bit like a primer today as well. So even though I'm going to do a halo eye, which means a little bit more eye makeup, I do. I have decided to just use the Revlon um, Illuminance Serum because I do just want a really nice, natural sort of skin looking base. So we're going to head in with this one today. Force of habit being a makeup artist, I always pop it on the back of my hand. So you can put it straight onto your brush should you wish. And I'm just going to start down here today. I just want to make sure that I don't have any sort of lines between my face there and my neck. Now, this is a really light to medium coverage, but as you can see, it's just nice and natural. So it's very skin-like, if that's the best word to use. And I'm just bringing it through here. Down my nose, I'm going to go right up under my eye because we can fix any of those little bits of fallout. We'll fix that later. I'm also going over the eye as well. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, it is, <laughs> it is still croaky. Always like to get my ears as well down that jawline. Just going to do the other side, it's the same. And as you can see, this is really knocks out the redness in my cheeks quite well. Um, I do like the product for that sort of 
really natural coverage and I'm sweeping it right over those eyelids as well and just buffing it in. I will go down my neck and just make sure that I get all the way down and down here as well. Trying not to get my t-shirt. It's always difficult but there we are. So that's so like always, I want to do all the base first and all the creamy products. This is um, Makeup by Mario. That's the uh, brush end. And this is the other end. Now, it's nearly finished. So I'm just using this for the contour. So I really like to do the big number three. So I bring some through the temple there, down here, and then along my jawline. Same with the other side, underneath, and then along the jawline. And then using the other side, we're just going to push that in. I like to just press it in and then really work it into the foundation so it just looks nice and seamless. I will go over this with, I always do that, get it into my hair. So just ignore that. <laughs> I always um, will go back in with the foundation brush as well. And I've really hit that hairline, so we'll get rid of that. Same on the other side. Just sort of buffing that in. Again, I've done that too. Shocker, you'd think I would not do that. But once my hair's done and it falls across my face, you actually don't see that anyway. It's quite obvious now that I have it sort of pulled back with my headband. And then just along that jawline as well, and a little bit through the chin, just to chisel that off. Just going in with my foundation brush, just to really blend that in, push it back, keep that warmth, just make it look a little more seamless. Because I'm going to use the Pillow Talk Dreams uh, eyeshadow palette, which has that really nice sort of pinky tones. I thought I'd use the Youngblood um, Vivid Luxe Cream Blush. This is in Mulberry. To so see how it's got that sort of nice pinky tone to it. So we're going to place this just on the high points of the cheeks. Now, I really like to call this a little bit like the Nike tick. So you want to go like that, and then you want to sweep it back. So sweeping it back ever so slightly. These pigments are really strong. <laughs> Once I've placed that on, I'll just take my foundation brush and just really push it into the area that I've placed that and then same thing, a little bit right there and then sweeping it back. Same on the other side. This just adds that flush of colour and we will follow that with a pressed powder at the end. Before we go any further, I'm just going to comb my brows up and out. We'll pop a little bit of colour in them later, but they just kind of annoy me when they're not sitting straight. <laughs> okay. Now, to prepare the eyes, I'm using the um, Paint Pot by MAC. This is Painterly, and I'm just using my finger and I'm placing it all the way along the mobile lid and right up to just under that brow there. And then in that inner corner, I always make sure I get that inner corner and a little bit goes a long way. So this just preps that eye area ready for eyeshadow. Same on the other side. So just using my finger, these fingernails have got a little bit long, so struggling to get the product out of the pot. <laughs> so just right into that inner corner and right up under your brow there. So these are the eyeshadows here, aren't they gorgeous? So for a halo eye, the idea is that you have color kind of in the inner corner and the outer corner and it's like a halo and they sort of meet in that crease and it sort of like graduates from a light to a dark. So we're going to start with this one here and it's, it's a pretty um, dark shade anyway, it's quite pigmented. So we're going to start here and we're going to start that on the outer corner. Easiest way is to take a fluffy brush and dip it into your product and then go right into that corner and just really tap it in. So you want the bulk of your product right there. And don't worry about 
like getting too fussy if it's coming down we can clean all that up later so the idea now is to just get it into that corner and then once you've got the product you can see most of it's off the brush now oh, it's a little bit there then you can start sweeping it towards the inner corner and into that crease and just moving it around so it's a little less um, concentrated and a little bit more blended I love to flick it up onto this brow bone mainly because my eyes are starting to hood and this really helps to lift them up As you can see this one's quite hooded and this one's starting to lift it does help when I raise my brows and just working that through so the residuals going through the crease but I made sure the bulk of that color was on this outer corner same on the other side so placing it into that outer corner and just get it in there make sure all the product is there and just keep pressing it in until you feel like most of it's come off your brush Does that makes sense so just pressing it in and then you can start moving it towards the inner corner up into that brow bone and through the crease okay so that's one side of the halo now we're going to take a smaller blending brush same shade and we're going to go on the inner corner so what we want to do is exactly the same process is you're just going to stick it in that inner corner same little idea there like just placing it in and then the bulk of the color and then moving the residual just to meet the rest of that residual and it is a little bit harder in the inner corner because you have a smaller space to work with same thing just keep sort of placing it in and blending it through once you've got it in there you can take your larger brush just really fan that through a bit more there we are that's a bit better just be careful you don't get it too far in that corner there we really want that to be free of product same on the other side just placing that product like we did on the outer corner place it into position get rid of it all and then once you know it's off we can start blending it through that crease and we're just meeting the other side and now just that bigger brush and I'm just going to fan that out So now we're going to take the other matte shade, which is a dark shade. I'm going to use this smaller fluffy brush and we're going to repeat sort of step number one. So what we want to do is stick it right in this inner corner. We don't want to go up on the brow too much. We want to keep this low. So we're keeping it in the crease quite low and we're just bringing it through. So this is going to create a lot of depth. And I also like to bring this one a little bit underneath the eye as well. Same on the other side, so just placing it in that inner corner. Once again, getting rid of all the product before you start sweeping it through. And then a little bit on that bottom lash line. Okay, then taking that same larger fluffy brush and just sweeping that through, really just blending that darker shade out and towards the center same on the other side now to complete the halo effect we're taking that darker shade and same thing placing it in that inner corner and just bringing it through to meet that crease same on the other side a little bit there and just bringing it through to meet the crease. Apologies, I have just been sneezing, so I'm a little blocked. Now, because it's looking a little blotchy, just taking that larger fluffy brush again and just really sort of working that through and blending it. You really want to close that eye a little bit to get that in there, that halo effect. 
same on this side, just sweeping it through. Now we picked up a small amount of that darker shade before and we just want to make sure it's run underneath the eyes. Now for the pop colour, the colour that's going to go on the ball, I'm going to choose the lighter shade in this uh, shimmer and we're just going to get a flat brush. You could use your finger as well. Um, I'm just using the brush so it's easier for you to see and you're just going to place it right in the center there, so in between where you've done your halo shades. And that just really helps pop that out. Same on the other side, just placing it right on the middle of the ball of the eye there and right up to the crease. Not in it, just up to the crease. And that just really pops out the eyes. If you feel you've gone too high and you've hit into that crease, just get your fluffy brush and just run it through just so that there isn't any um, shimmer into that crease. The problem with getting the shimmer into that crease is it will sit in your wrinkles, so we don't want that. Okay, so I'm not using my usual brown. I'm going to use one of Youngblood's. This is one of their new ones. It's called the One Swipe Gel Liner. This is in black or what they would call caviar. They do have a nice um, chocolate shade, but I thought this look would look really good with black. So I'm just going to go along my lash line ever so slightly. As you can see, I'm being very, oh yeah, that's nice, very delicate. And I'm going to go in that inner corner just to finish off the shape of the eye. Now for the outer corner, I'm just going to turn that up. I like to have my eye open because that way we can really see where I want this tiny little flick to be. And then I just use my finger to pull that out. And then go back in with the liner. It's difficult on a um, using the phone as a mirror, but you get the gist. And then I just come back, fill in that little corner, and there you have that baby wing. Same on the other side, so just really close to that lash line all the way in just to create some definition. And then you can see I'm just really gently, this is actually quite a creamy product, so really easy to use. I open to create that little flick and then using my fingernail, luckily they are long. Oh well, look at that, see? And then I just go back in and fill in that center. And that really helps to create that baby wing. And a small amount, I didn't do it on the other side, just under the eye as well. I do like to put a small amount on, which looks weird, the tight line. This is a great trick because it adds weight to the top of the eye without putting too much black all over your eyeshadow. Just going in with some mineral mascara to complete the look and I just when I do mascara I do like to sort of blink down onto the lashes and then help create that little bit of lift and then I just tap the roots not in my eye, of the bottom lashes. And then same on the other eye as well, just sweeping that through. And once again, I sort of try and blink down and really coat each lash. And tapping those bottom lashes. For my brows, I'm gonna use the Power Brow. This is by Rumi Cosmetics. Um, this is really fast becoming my absolute favorite because it is so easy to use. So as you can see, I'm just using the tiny little spoolie wand here and just sweeping. I always start at the outer side of my brows because that's where I feel the hair is sort of diminishing and it's a lot lighter. And then I bring it in as I need it. So a little bit through here, but not too much. I don't like it to be too dark on that inner corner because I feel it does it can make you look quite angry. Um, I do take another 
spoolie wand and just comb that out just to give it a real natural appearance. And then just add a bit more color and on the other side as well. So same thing, just, you know, no two brows are the same, they're quite different. And then a little bit on that inner corner. I do find I try not to get my brows done too often because they do take too much out. Even if they don't pluck too much, they sort of tend to um, thin them. And as you get older, they just don't grow back. So I'm trying not to get mine done at all. <laughs> so today I actually don't want to use concealer. So I'm grabbing a small amount of the illuminants that I used before. And I'm just going to get a small brush. So I've got a hair stuck to my face. A small brush and what I'm going to do is just place it nice and close to my under my lash line there and just really clean up. So I'm just using that same product that I've used as a base just to clean up underneath. Let me get a little bit more defined and delicate. I just feel I don't want concealer today. Sometimes I find concealer just um, <laughs> literally highlights all my wrinkles so this way this is a very thin product and it just sits beautifully on the skin so that's what I'm using today and I will set that with a powder okay so I have chosen this lip liner it is in plump this could tip the makeup to being too dark but we're gonna give it a go and I'll, I won't draw it on so strong I think just a light sort of shade because already, already you can see that that's quite uh, dark. Now I always like to go across the cupid's bow there and then come down. Same, always the center. So if I do any sort of overlining, it's always in the center at the top and the center at the bottom. And then I just meet it and I try not to sort of follow my mouth dead down because I find that that's quite aging. I sort of keep it, I sort of like shorten it a little bit so that keeps them looking a little bit more full. So this is one of the lip shines. This is in Chiffon. I nearly couldn't read that. Um, and I'm just going to place that on. Mm, I do like that color. <laughs> so now I'm going to set all these creamy products. This is the Pony Cosmetics. This is the chocolate bronzing powder. So I'm going to use this to just set where we put that nice little bit of contour earlier on and really help to frame the face and warm it up. It really does help to sculpt the face, give you that little bit of lift where you need it. Keeping in theme with the Pillow Talk, this is the Pillow Talk Dreams Blush and I'm just going to swirl around the outside and when you use that on the cheeks, exactly where we put the cream blush earlier. So just placing that in and that just gives you that nice flush of colour. I always love to take a little bit of the blush just up on this brow bone area just to really soften the eye socket there. Same on the other side, just a little bit, brush of colour, and then you can bring it out just a touch. Last but not least, I'm using the Translucent Powder by Youngblood, and I'm just going to place, I'm knocking off the excess, a little bit under the eye to set under there. And see how it just softens the whole area. Down the centre of the nose, across the lip. And then my favorite, just up under here. And as you can see, this really helps to snatch in the face. And once you've placed it, of course, don't leave it like that. Then just give it a little bit of a swipe and this just sets that area beautifully. So there you have it. That's my halo eye using the Charlotte Tilbury 
Hello Talk Dreams eyeshadow palette. Let me know what you think.